So we were discussing about the uh, numericals in the last class about the conditioned random variables, right? So there we try to see Okay, so the numerical 2.26, this, uh, I think I didn't solve it totally. For this, we need to do the, what you call integration by parts, okay? This has to be solved by integration by parts to get this value. You might not get exactly this, but you might get around this. So for that, you might get the figure, which is somewhere around, again, somewhere around this value, right? So let us see the uh, solution for the same. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just taking that one by two pi and this term, this term I'm taking one by two pi integral minus two by three, two, two by two, two by three, W square e to the power of minus W square by two d omega. This we'll try to solve, right? So, same thing I have taken over here, might be a little more elaboration, but at the end it is two by three and minus two by three over here. This should be minus two by three. So you take u equal to w and dv is equal to w e to the power of minus w squared by two d omega. So du will be d omega and v will be minus e to the power of omega squared by two. This will be the value of v. So therefore one by two pi, one by root of two pi as it is and integration by part that is integral u dv is equal to u v minus integral v du so u is w v is this quantity with the limits minus two by three and two by three and v du is v is this quantity itself du is nothing but dw that is what is written. So minus minus will cancel, that will become plus. Also, you need to substitute this two by three as the upper limit and minus two by three as the lower limit. So if you substitute the upper limit and the lower limit, you will get this. And this I'm writing as it is with the minus of minus as plus. So, <clears throat> This will be minus of minus will become again plus with a minus sign. So that means both will become minus. So therefore it will be minus four by three e to the power of minus four by 18. So this quantity will be 0 0.531928 and this quantity might be around 0 0.8. So if you multiply that, right, you'll get minus 0 0.4529. And this quantity is straight away from the table the table of the, what you call, uh, you know, this is 0 0.66666, table of the normal distribution, you can get this value. And the table of the normal distribution is, might be, you can see from here, right? 0 0.666 will be somewhere here in between. So that will be 0 0.7454 to 0 0.7486, the value, for 6666 will be 84 minus 50, 86 minus 54 multiplied by 2 by 3 because that is 0.66. That will give us the value somewhere around 22. So that 22 value has to be uh, you know added to this 54 to get the value 0 0.745, 7476. So that is the one limit we have the other limit is 0 0.7476 for the positive 2 by 3 and for minus 2 by 3 it will be a minus of 1 minus 0 0.7476 so this will be approximately 0 0.4952 so if you subtract you know you take this and solve this this is minus and this is plus you'll get points you know 
0.069 might be a 3 also will come there, right? 0 0.096, uh, 0.0693. And that value divided by, you know, this, uh, this factor is directly from the, uh, you know, slide, which is there here. This is 4952 or might be just 495, whatever you have taken. So if you solve this, you will get the value which is somewhere around this figure. It need not be exact because the root of that will just turn out to be somewhere around 230 ohms. Okay, this is how we need to solve it. So that's one problem. Next, we will go for the, what you call, problem number 89. I think 88 is where we stop. Given the discrete random variable x where fxx is equal to 0.37 del x plus 0.16 del x minus 1 plus 0.29 x minus 2 plus 0.18 del x minus 3. So please remember that this is a discrete value. That means at x equal to 0, this will be the magnitude. At x equal to 1, this will be the magnitude. At x equal to 2, this will be the magnitude. At x equal to 3, this will be the magnitude. So four, you know, impulses we'll have for fxx with magnitudes which are given over here. So the event B is B equal to x greater than 1. What are the PDF and CDF, CDF conditioned by the event B? So we want x greater than 1. x greater than 1 out of all this is these two. This is x equal to 2, this is x equal to 3, this is x equal to 1, this is x equal to 0. So x greater than 1 will just correspond to these two, right? That is p of x equal to 2 and p of x equal to 3, that is 0.29 plus 0.18. This 0.29 and this 0.18. These two values we will get. And once we, we get this value, that total value will turn out to be 0.47. So this is the B, okay, probability of B. This should be probability of B. So F of X uh, given B at uh, the value X will be equal to the F of X, X by the value, which is probability of B, and that is 0.47. So you'll get, you know, this is, you should remember, we should take only those value for which x is greater than one, again, in fxx, right? So therefore, we'll get only these two, we'll not get these two in this here, only these two, and that has to be divided by 0.47. So we'll get 0.617 del x minus two plus 0.383 del x minus three. Please remember that if you add this to this, to this, to this, 0.37 plus 0.16 plus 0.29 plus 0.18 will turn out the value which will turn out to be the uh, quantity which will the value which will turn out to be the what you call one. This plus this plus this plus this. Similarly. 0.617 plus 0.383 will turn out to be 1. Okay, so f of x given b at x will be equal to 0.617 u x minus 2 plus this quantity over there, right? Now, when we have the PDF as del functions, the CDF will have the u functions. That is the only difference. Okay, if we have the PDF as the, what you call, del values, the CDF will be the U values. Integral of del will be U. Integral of del will be U. So that's, we'll get the C PDF like this and the CDF like this. Now, net, now let us go to the problem number 90. Given the discrete random variable X where FX is equal to again, uh, this quantity, same thing we are taking over here. The event B for X less than or equal to one. What are the PDF and CDF conditioned by the event B? So less than or equal to one means 
we need to consider these two only. These two. Only. So P of B will be sum of 0 0.37 and 0 0.16, and that will give us 0 0.53. P of B will be 0.53. And the Fx given B of X will just turn out to be. Please switch off your mobiles. Even if I turn on, you are unnecessarily turning on. Don't do that, Sajid. Yes. Mute your voice. Okay. So f of x given b of x will just turn out to be 0.37 del x plus 0.16 del x minus 1 because that is the one which corresponds to x less than 1. And divided by the value which is 0.53. Divided the value which will turn out to be 0.53. So we are trying to divide that by 0.53 over here and hence we will get this quantity. Now again, fx, small fx, if it is integrated, we'll get capital FX. That is PDF. If you integrate, you'll get the CDF. And integration of del x will just give you ux, all the other things remaining same. Okay, all the other things remaining same. So next we will go for the problem number 93. Here the uh, question is. The random variable x is uniformly distributed between 2 to 7. Please remember that it is uniformly distributed, that is constant between 2 to 7. The event B is x greater than 3.7. What are PDF, mean, variance, and random variable x conditioned by the event B? So fxx is equal to now, range is 2 to 7, that is 5. Therefore, because it is uniform, fxx will be equal to 1 by 5 in the range of 2 to 7 in the range of 2 to 7. 1 by 5 between 2 to 7, right? We should have mentioned the range also. Now B is greater than 3.7. B is greater than 3.7. So P B will be the range of values which are greater than 3.7 will be 7 minus 3.7 divided by 5. Okay, from 3.7 to till 7 value from the value x takes is 2 to 7 in the initial case in fx, whereas in b, x is greater than 3.7. So therefore, from 3.7 till 7, so probability of that will be 7 minus 3.7 by the value 5, because we have this 1 by 5. So that will turn out to be 0.66. So we should divide the quantity of fxx by the pb, which is 0.66 to get the what you call conditioned PDF, conditioned PDF, okay? Conditioned PDF is unconditioned PDF divided by PB. So one by five divided by 0.66 in the range which is corresponding to the B itself, that is 3.7 to 7.0. And that turns out to be 0 0.3030, right? So having found this FX at B, then we can find the mean. Mean will be x integral uh, x fx, uh, you know, given b of x. Okay, this will be nothing but the value of the the conditioned, uh, you know, uh, mean will be again same thing as the normal mean. Okay, so we can see that over here, which will turn out to be the quantity which is here. Right, this is the one which we are talking about. This is the one which we are talking about. Okay. So we will get here. We will get here the value which is, you know, basically 
plus 3.7 by 2. Okay, the what you call range of value 7.0 plus 3.7 by 2. This is because of the sole reason that we are talking about the uniform distribution. Formalize that, but you can write this formula also because when we talk about uniform distribution, then it will be maximum plus minimum divided by 2. Maximum plus minimum divided by 2 will be the mean. This again, we already found long back. Maximum plus minimum divided by 2 for uniform random variables. So that will turn out to be 5.35. Now, similarly, the variance will be maximum minus minimum whole squared by 12 for the, what you call, uh, variance. And that will turn out to be 0 0.9075. And this is only for the uniformly distributed case. This is only for the uniformly distributed case. One should remember that. So thus we can find the mean the variance as well as the PDF for the uniformly distributed random variable between two to seven, given the event B equal to X greater than 3.7. Now let us see the 95. So let X be a exponential random variable, which is given by this. Now this is a CDF. Please remember that what we are writing here is the CDF, right? And let B be the event B greater than uh, 2. What are the you know conditioned PDF, the mean, conditioned mean, and the conditioned variance, right? Now, this is a continuous case over here, and it is not uniform, it is rather exponential. So for B x greater than 2, it is similar to telling that it is P of B is equal to p of x greater than 2 and that is 1 minus p of x less than 2. So we can try to write for, you can see that we are right, we have here greater than 0, that is between 0 to infinity. So less than 2 means between 0 to 2, right, between 0 to 2. So 1 minus fx of 2, we need to consider this, this expression because we are not talking about the value which is uh, uh, negative. For the value negative, however, the capital FX X is equal to uh, zero. Only for positive values, it is having this expression. So therefore, one minus FX two is what we have over here. So that is one minus, you know, FX is one minus e to the power of minus two by four. So one one will cancel and we are left with e to the power of minus two by four. That is e to the power of minus half that turns out to be 0 0.6065. So having got this, then we need to find the conditioned PDF. Conditioned PDF will be FXX by PB in the range which corresponds to X greater than two. That is two to infinity. You can write X greater than two or two less than X less than infinity, either of the two. So, but we don't know this FXX, we know the capital FXX, which is CDF, but we don't know the PDF. So to find the PDF, we need to differentiate this with respect to X. If you differentiate this with respect to X, for X less than zero, if you differentiate zero, you will still get zero. Whereas for X greater than zero, if you differentiate this one, you will get zero. But if you differentiate this, you will get minus one by four, minus of minus one by four. and uh, minus of minus 1 by 4, that is plus 1 by 4, e to the power of minus x by 4. Okay, e to the power of minus x by 4. So all that will just give us the value 1 by 4 e to the power of minus x by 4. We are dividing that by PB. PB is 0 0.6065. Even if you get a negative quantity, you should write positive because PDF cannot be negative. So therefore, we'll get at the end 0.4122 e to the power of minus x by 4 for x greater than 2. Then mean again, same formula we need to use. That is integral x fx given b of x and that will give us the value 0 0.4122 integral 2 to infinity because this is greater than 2. So therefore, it is 2 to infinity x e to the power of minus x by 4 dx. So this you can 
solve by again integration by parts you can solve it by integration by parts and you'll get 6.0003 then the next one that is mean of the square conditioned mean of the square will be 0.4122 integral 2 to infinity x square e to the power of minus x by 4 dx again integration by parts will give this as 52.0025 then we have the what you call sigma which is this minus square of this mean of the square minus square of the mean and that is what we have here this square minus this square will give us 15.99 or approximately 16 this is 52 this is you know 6 so 52 minus 6 square will be you know uh, 16 and if you take the root of that you'll approximately get it as 4 if you want the standard deviation right if you want the standard deviation now let us find out they try to solve the problem which is 98 so here x is a gaussian random variable for which which mu x is equal to 512 and sigma x is equal to 33 an event b is given by b greater b with x greater than 500 this condition of, of x can be accomplished uh, for example by testing p pass of the test is equal to pb what is the expression for the conditioned you know pdf so b greater than b equal to x greater than 500 will give pb equal to 1 minus pb less than 500 that is uh, equal to 1 minus fx uh, the uh, under 500 and that we can try to write it as so this this value can be written as normalizing that 1 minus 5 of 500 minus 518 divided by 33 and that will give us 1 minus 5 of minus 0.5455 and this will give us the value which is this or you can write this as 1 minus of 5 of 0.5455 plus uh, 1 minus of 1 minus 5 of 0.5455 and that will be just 1 1 will cancel and we are just left with phi of 0.5455 which will just turn out to be this quantity right which will turn out to be just this quantity then we need to divide this by the expression fx x okay this has to be divided uh, to this rather this has to be divided to the fx x in the particular range which we are interested in that is uh, for greater than 500 okay so it is 1 by 0 0.7073 this is the value of pb and 33 is our sigma x root 2 pi is the what you call a formula exponential minus of x minus 518 squared by 2 into 33 square this is sigma x square okay 33 square is sigma x square 2 will be there 2 sigma square x minus mu whole square and mu is 518 so if you solve that we'll get this value for x greater than 500 please remember that it is x greater than 500 then we come to the 99 measurement of a product produces the random variable x which is gaussian with mean of sigma mu x and variance sigma x square the product is conditioned by selecting only those products where mu x minus sigma x less than x less than mu x plus 1.5 sigma x so given this conditioning what is the pdf for the selected product so condition is b equal to mu x minus sigma x less than x less than mu x plus 1.5 sigma x so therefore pb will be naturally the quantity which is fx mu x plus 0.1 0.5 sigma x minus uh, fx mu x minus of sigma x so this one here and this one here with the cumulative distributive function that is nothing but phi x itself and that will be phi of 1.5 and phi of minus 1 
okay so if you try to find out this 0 0.9332 minus 0 0.1587 this again has to be found from the tables the tables are uh, there directly here and from there we need to find those values and having found those values we'll get 0 0.7745 and this quantity should divide the fxx in the range which is specified by this right so fxx again is 1 by you know sigma x root of 2 pi exponential minus of x minus mu x squared by 2 sigma x squared between the range which is given over here range is that only okay so you can simplify that and get the result whatever is the simplified value you can write it there so this finishes the numericals for uh, our case so if you have any doubts you can ask if you don't have